And number one, which I feel single-handedly is the worst thing that I was taught in school, is that single-handedly, that was the worst, worst thing that I was taught when I was getting my nutrition degree. I can't believe they taught us this garbage. It's, it's so unbelievable to me. Well, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelly. I am a keto dietitian. That's right, a keto dietitian. I threw out everything I learned in school, went against a grain, and now follow the keto, low-carbon, anti-inflammatory lifestyle. If you want to hear more about my story is how I rebelled against everything that I was taught, you are going to want to click a link below, but I'm warning you grab some Kleenex because it's a lot of tears. I had to overcome a lot of stuff, boo, and you're going to want to hear about it. I love going against the grain with everything that I was taught and especially the dumbest stuff that I was taught in school. So here's our video for today. It is titled the dumbest stuff that I was taught in nutrition school. Or should I maybe say the garbage that I was taught in nutrition school? You know, one of the first things that absolutely blew my mind, it's like I'm a high school senior, I wanna go to college, and you have to remember this is a long, long time ago, is that you need to take some electives. Electives? I don't even know what that is. And it had to be non-nutrition electives. So I picked some ridiculous classes, like I think I picked geology and astronomy because we know that geology and astronomy needs to be taught in nutrition. Because let me tell you, when any of my new patients or clients walk in, one of the questions on that form is, tell me about the Milky Way. And I'm not meaning this Milky Way, I'm meaning that Milky Way. Complete waste of my time. I don't even know why I took those classes. I think I had this thought in my mind that some cute boy was gonna be in there and that we would look in this at the stars. It was pretty much Scantron test, which if you don't know those, it's this sheet, it's bubbling. Transition, complete waste of time. I mean, but let's get into the seriousness of some of the items that I was taught. And I'm sure you've been brainwashed by our beautiful media that these things are true. And number one, which I feel single-handedly is the worst thing that I was taught in school, is that you do not need vitamins or supplements if you are following a healthy diet. There is so much wrong with that statement. I can't even begin to explain. And I know that students nowadays are still being taught this garbage. And that's exactly what it is, is garbage. And we have to make a change about it. And we need to stand up against it because the government where we get our stuff from is wrong on this. Why? Number one, how many folks do you know following a healthy diet? Not that many. So we need vitamins and supplements. But number two, there has been so much incredible research on vitamins and supplements promoting health that we are doing our patients and clients a disservice by not teaching it to them. You can tell I'm screaming, my blood pressure's going up, we need like the Shelly scale of what's making me all more angry. And I'm here to tell you that there are some conditions and some illnesses where vitamins and supplements can greatly benefit the individual. An example is magnesium. Low levels of magnesium have been found to cause migraines. And you know personally, if you watched my story, you're gonna wanna watch it. I'm telling you that I am a migraine sufferer. Even their association, which I believe is the American Migraine Association, I kinda try to stay away from those, recommends individuals take between 400 and 500 milligrams of magnesium a day. One study found that 75% of Americans don't get enough magnesium in their diet. Very important, it's magnesium oxide that is used to treat migraines. Studies have found that regular intake of magnesium has reduced migraines by 41%. That is huge, folks, 41%. Other research has shown that taking magnesium daily has reduced the effects of PMS-related migraines. So why are we not teaching this to folks? You can take magnesium oxide in the pill form, and again, the recommended dosage is 400 to 500 milligrams. Omega-3 supplementation is another fabulous example. I don't know about you all, but I don't eat fish three times a week. And if you do, give me the secret because wow, you're cooking that, you're, are you catching them yourself and you're cleaning them and you're, you know, throwing them in your oven or in your air fryer? I think that's awesome. If you do that, fantastic. But I haven't to this date, I've been doing this for, oh, now y'all got me doing that. 
17 years, I have yet to meet one patient who eats fish three times a week. And gang, I am from the coast. I am from home, Louisiana, where fish is prevalent. I still don't get folks eating fish three times a week. It's crazy. Oh, but I guess the folks in DC eat fish three times a week. Burn. I personally believe that every single person on this planet should be taking omega-3 supplementation every day. And yes, there's forms for kids. My favorite brand is Nordic Naturals, and no, I am not sponsored by them. I really don't have any sponsors anymore. I used to be a shill back in the day, but um, you know, not anymore since I've kind of uncovered truths about things. But there's so many benefits of taking omega-3. Studies have found that you know, regular intake of taking omega-3 supplementation can reduce depression. And you know, we're all walking around stressed out because of everything that's going on in the world. And what's more important is that folks that have depression or anxiety issues, they found that their regular intake of adding omega-3 supplementation has decreased their symptoms. Now there's three types of omega-3, DHA, EPA, and ALA. And it is the EPA that has been found to decrease depression. One study even found that EPA is as effective as treating depression as their antidepressive medications. That is huge gains because some of those medicines that they prescribe to you can promote weight gain. How great would it be that you could take something that not only doesn't cause weight gain, but has so many other benefits to the body. Even taking omega-3 during your pregnancy is huge. And I did this and it can help benefit the baby with decreased risk of ADHD and cerebral palsy. And the most common reason we hear to take an omega-3 supplement is for heart disease. And this is the fight that I get back when it comes to talking about keto and low carb with folks. All you do is tell people to eat fat. I could never prescribe a low carb diet. Shut your face, old school dietitian, because here's the deal. We promote good omega-3 fatty acids, which have been found to help with heart disease. For example, omega-3s can increase the HDL cholesterol, which is the good cholesterol in our body. It can also help with the prevention of your blood clots. And most importantly, it can help decrease inflammation. And you all know that I am huge on inflammation. My clinic, we pretty much do weight loss and inflammation. And the first thing that I put folks on is an omega-3. I recommend 2000 milligrams a day. I'll have links below to the studies because I know I'm gonna get a Debbie Downer on here who's gonna complain and boo-boo and be pretty much paid off by some of the pharmaceutical companies. Whereas I'm here to say, bebe, we can take that omega-3 and do so much better than some of those pill dispensers that you're visiting. Woo, I'm fired up today. Ow! And gang, while I can go over so many more vitamins and supplements, I think one of the most important ones to note in today's world is vitamin D. It's no secret we know what's going on. There's, you know, whatever you want to call it. If you want to call it the vid, if you want to give it its full name, I prefer to just use these symbols so YouTube doesn't get mad at me and I get this taken off because I'm some kind of weird, you know, crackpot or something of that sort, which I've been called before. I don't, I don't do any of that stuff. But anywho, there's so much prevalent research coming out of the wonderful benefits of vitamin D whenever it comes to immunity. I encourage you all, I'll have some research links below. Take that vitamin D. It's been found to benefit vid, whatever you want to call it. I personally take vitamin D every day. It is a good idea to get started on this stuff. And in true game show technique, I wish I had one of those long microphones because this is getting super fun. The next thing that I've been taught, and I talk about this all the time in my clinic, shop the perimeter of the store. What? What? Why? And I get it, maybe in 1927, when you know you had two pennies and you walked into the store and it was about 400 square feet and you just kind of walked the sides and got it. Come on gang, this is so old school and it's still, it's on so many handouts that I see that folks bring in to me. It's almost an embarrassing concept because I don't know about you, but there's a lot of specialty stores. Stores are huge now. Typically the first thing when you walk in the store is the bakery. I mean, come on, you want to you wanna tell folks to get their cupcakes and then you're gonna come back and tell me, wow, Shelly, people should know better not to get cupcakes. No, ma'am, they don't. They do not. If you tell them to shop the perimeter store and a cupcake is there, I guarantee you somebody's gonna buy that cupcake because you said to shop the perimeter of the store. Don't think so? Ask any kid. 
I have two kids. If I told them to shop the perimeter of the store because that's the healthiest thing and that's what we should be teaching our children to do, I know for a fact both of mine are gonna come back with cupcakes. Oh, <gasps> Shelly, aren't you a dietitian? And you know, don't your kids know better? Girl, please, don't try to sneak anything under me. And don't act like yours are angels. But the point is, gang, that is such outdated advice. Stores are not there to put the healthy stuff in the, in the perimeter and the non-healthy stuff in the aisles. That is just dumb, dumb, dumb. And if you think I'm being really vocal or anything, you can make a comment below because you're gonna help me in the algorithm. Thanks so much. Truth of the matter is, gang, there's so many things that are in the inner aisles that are great. We got our wonderful gluten-free high fiber cereals. Even some of our breads are now in the interior. And yes, I did say bread, don't panic. You all know I promote a low carb gluten-free breads. Uh, for example, Unbun is one of my favorites. Base Culture is another one. Going back to the cereals, I like the Pro Granola. One of my favorite stores is a store called Drug Emporium, and it is more of a local based store. And I'm sure you all have stores like that in your uh, city or town. If you're in a place and there's one, go in it. There really is no perimeter. It just has the foods kind of in the middle of the store, down the aisles. For example, your almond flours, your wonderful, you know, sugar replacers to use, like your allulose and your stevia made with your made or cut with no sugar alcohols. Because remember, sugar alcohols can cause a little bit of tummy troubles there. But remember, gang, it is okay to go in the aisles of the store. There is no need for you to feel any kind of guilt or anything like that. I can go on and on. There's wonderful tunas. We talked about omega-3 uh, fatty acids earlier. There's your great waters. I mean, there's so many good things in in the middle of the store. Don't, just, just don't follow that advice anymore. It, next. This one hurts my heart as well. <laughs> a serving of fruit juice <laughs> is a fruit. <laughs> Girl, where you came up with that? What? Huh? A serving of fruit juice is a fruit. No. <laughs> what? I mean, nine times out of 10, it, okay, so so let, let's be real about this. So we got an orange, which we really don't do oranges in our clinics. We do more of the berries because they're higher fiber. And if I'm gonna juice that bad boy and I drink it, it probably gonna taste like bad, like really tart. So what do these companies add to it to make it taste better? Sugar, you know, it, it always kills me when I talk to new patients and maybe they've, you know, seen other educators and all that stuff, which is fine, which is fine. It doesn't matter where you start. It always matters where you end up. And you know, they'll say, well, I take my medicine with fruit juice and it's not their fault. I'm not at all laughing about them. And it counts as one of my four fruits for the day because that's what's on the USDA guidelines. And my blood sugars are like in the 320 range. I don't know why and I'm just, yeah, that's bad. That's just, that's just bad. Gang, companies cut fruit juice with sugar. Let's keep it real. You know, you'll see some of the sugar-free ones, which I guess you can do. You gotta read the labels because y'all know I hate all the artificial sweeteners. Now sugar replacers are different that they add to them. So read the label. Okay, I had to pause this video and really do the calculation for you. A cup of orange juice is 112 calories, 26 grams of carbs, and zero grams of fiber. Whereas a cup of raspberries, 64 calories, 15 grams of carbs, eight grams of fiber, so seven net carbs. You mean to tell me that orange juice is the same as my raspberries. So first off, the calories are pretty much half. The net carbs are, oh man, y'all making me do math again. It's definitely less than half, but what would that be, less than 65%? I, I mean, uh, hmm. No, 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 no. Just, just don't. Now we really getting into the nitty gritty. Eggs increase cholesterol. So only eat the egg whites. Okay, I get this one because oftentimes we hear eggs are good for us, we'll hear eggs are bad for us. And I get it. We've been taught, you know, to make the egg white omelets. Ugh. Gross. But here's the deal with the egg yolk, we could be missing out on vital omega-3s, we could be missing out on vital choline. And yes, I get it, the egg yolk does have fat. But again, we know that our body needs fat to survive. We should not be following a fat-free diet anymore. We need to bring fat into the body. So that little egg yolk, you'd be okay with having that. And in fact, the entire protein group to me is embarrassing. That's on the food guide pyramid. I mean, let's take the poor chicken for example. We are only allowed to eat the chicken 
breast, all right? Because it's lean and it's white meat. Why aren't we eating the thighs? The thighs are just as wonderful. Gang, don't believe that stuff. That white meat is better than dark meat. Let's compare it. So your three ounces of chicken breast is 26 grams of protein, four grams of fat, and 147 calories. Your chicken thigh, three ounces, 24 grams of protein, five grams of fat, and 147 calories. That's not really that big of a difference. The difference is gonna be the taste quality. Often folks overcook chicken breasts and hence it's dry and it's funky and we just go, oh my gosh, am I really eating this? You know, rotate them in, put the thighs in the air fryer on your grill. They're fantastic. Throw them in your soups, great flavor. You tell your patients to do steamed vegetables with a Mrs. Dash. Sorry, Mrs. Dash, you need to go away. First off, Mrs. Dash is nasty is gross and again here's where my maturity factor comes in because some of y'all are being like you're not being mature about it by saying mrs dash is nasty um baby do you eat that stuff and if you do comment below because again i want the youtube algorithm to be like dang she's got some engagement on that video yeah boo go on and comment it's not good gang and then steamed vegetables by themselves oh my gosh like really like let's just set up people to fail because i surely would rebel against that Look, I love some steam in the bag vegetables. They're super convenient. They save us time. You can get them home. And in fact, I do recommend my patients to use them. But here's the deal. We're gonna add some flavor to it and we're gonna add a little bit of fat to it. We're gonna cook them in the microwave like we should. Don't overcook them. We're gonna add a tablespoon of wonderful olive oil to it or our avocado oil. We're gonna add some great seasoning. Some of my favorites are Kevin's. I do love uh, all the Primal Kitchen marinades if you wanna put a tablespoon and toss it in there. There's coconut aminos. There's so many things you can do. I mean, I have some folks who'll uh, put just some garlic and onion powder in there and toss it up. Remember for FODMAP, that's a no-no, the garlic and onion powder. But uh, add flavor to it, add a little fat to it. We know that fat is good for our body. And, and the same thing with your salad dressings, get rid of that fat-free garbage. They often add sugar to it, but here's the deal. There was a study that was released that showed that vegetables are absorbed in the body better when there is a little bit of fat with them. So they found that when people ate a salad with fat-free dressing, nope, none of the benefits of the vegetables got absorbed in the body, but here's the deal when they had six grams of fat that was with that vegetable they found that that was the optimal absorption of the nutrients now for salad dressings y'all know i'm a fan of primal kitchen y'all know i'm bougie on a bayou so i cut it with a tablespoon of oil do that don't listen to that garbage i need to do a whole video on the next one and it is artificial sweeteners are great because they're fda approved and they're wonderful to cook with you know i i think i should just I, i'm just gonna make I'm just gonna make a new video on this. We, we ain't even gonna cover this because we just need to do a whole thing because this video would wind up being 55 minutes long and I know y'all got a lot of things to do because y'all are busy, but bottom line, no, not at all. There's some wonderful sugar replacers. Your stevia, that's not cut with your sugar alcohol. I mean, gang, and folks will say, well, why not sugar alcohol? A lot of people, it causes tummy troubles, including me. So that's why I kind of watch out for those, but Mm -mm. No. But really quick, on the culinary side, you have to remember when I was in school, it was just the pink and the blue packet. Cooking with these was a disaster. It wasn't a one-to-one -one ratio. And even you could doctor it as much as possible, but it had that god awful aftertaste. On the you know medical side, it has been found a lot of these artificial sweeteners can increase inflammation and increase migraines, which is something that we definitely don't want. Like I said, I'm gonna do a video down the road. Let me know what sugar replacers you want me to cover in this video. <gasps> oh my gosh. All of your patients can follow a 2000 ADA diet. An ADA is in the American Diabetes Association, and I know for a fact this still exists exist because that is the hospital trays that you are served if you are in the hospital. So you're in the hospital, they're not even doing preventative care, they're doing what's called sick care and they're bringing you a tray that has three servings of carbs. That's 45 grams of carbs at one meal and you know depending on if you, you know how tall you are, if you're male, female, we may be in that you know 50 carby 50 carb range, I can't even talk because I'm so 
flustered with this for your day and you're getting it in your whole meal. Not everybody needs 2,000 calories a day, friends. If I eat 2,000 calories a day, we would have a problem. And that whole American Diabetes Association stuff, no, because it is too many carbs. We don't need that much. When we're in the hospital, we ain't moving. Because folks will say, well, you need it for energy. Um, I don't know about you, but if I'm in the hospital, I sure as heck ain't running no marathon. I mean, think about it, gang. These are the questions I want you to start asking and you know, be really motivated to ask your healthcare provider. And you don't have to be mean about it. It's just like, why? It is okay to ask these questions. Why? I do it all the time. That's why I did this change. But 2,000 calories, stop. Stop it, stop it, stop it. The other part of that is what you eat matters. And the reason I say this is I, I did a video a while back on a diet with PCOS, and um, it showed that folks that were on you know the same amount of calories, one group of folks was given the regular low fat guidelines, and this group of folks right here was giving the low glycemic guidelines. See, I'm losing my train of thought because I'm so flabbergasted. This group, the low glycemic group, lost the most amount of weight, had improved insulin resistance. I mean, gang, we need to start looking at this new stuff instead of the stuff that we were taught in 1953. I don't understand why we're still doing this and it's complete garbage. And I have a personal connection with that story where I did follow that, you know, 1500 calorie ADA diet, tracked it all on my fitness pal and gang, it nearly killed me. And it leads me to say that this is the exact garbage that I was taught. I followed it for so long and it nearly killed me. One day I literally had a breakdown and realized I had to change and I'm getting very emotional about this. And I'm going to close out this video by saying you need to go and watch my story about how the ADA guidelines nearly killed me. It's right here. I'm going to link it below and gang, I love you all. I do this because I care about you and your health. We need to quit listening to this garbage because you have to watch my story. Thank you. Love to all. Mwah.